Hello, good afternoon and welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining today's webinar. My name is Sunny Makija and I'm a senior inside sales specialist with Crave Infotech. Today we are presenting on Fury for digitizing plant maintenance process, which will be presented by Shrikant Nistane with Crave Infotech. He is a digital transformation enthusiast experienced in SAP Digital Core, enterprise asset management, enterprise mobility and cloud platform. He has 27 plus years of industry experience helping an organization in wide range experience uh, with technology and techno technological changes for multiple line of business. And uh, for now, if you have any questions during the presentations, please type them in the Q&A box or in the chat section and uh, I will bring them up uh, after the presentation. And uh, now without any further ado, I will, I will hand over to Shrikant to start the presentation. Over to you Shrikant. Thank you, Sunny. Good afternoon. Good morning. Uh, and uh, good afternoon if you are on the uh, east side of the uh, US. Uh, thank you for joining the webinar. This is how I look like. And uh, I will be driving this webinar and talk to you about the, uh, the topic we have at hand today. Um, first, we'll talk a little bit about who we are. And then we'll walk through how we can use the Fury in plant maintenance. <clears throat> So this is a quick about Crave Infotech. Uh, we, we are passionate about digital transformation using SAP Intelligent Enterprise. So that's our ECC or S4 HANA both. I don't want you to confuse between that our solutions are only for uh, uh, S4. Then SAP Cloud Platform, Crave Prepackaged Solutions. Uh, and we are going to talk about them. And today's focus will be, of course, EAM. And then we also specialize in Zebra mobile computing technology and geo enablement from here and Google. So we basically combine these all together. So SAP ECC or S4 cloud platform, Zebra mobility location service, geo enablement from here for giving you solutions on the right hand side on the warehouse management, enterprise asset management, field service and supply chain. Uh, and today we are going to focus on EAM, so enterprise asset management. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have, um, I'm located in New Jersey and we have a ton of snow today. Um, internet is in and out. I was very worried whether I'll be able to run this webinar today, but uh, here we are. So a little bit, again, a uh, few more things about Crave. We are a 13 year old company, SAP partner. We have three partnerships, sell, build and service. Uh, Zebra, we are premium ISV and reseller. Here are technology also, we are ISV and reseller global presence, headquartered in New Jersey, and physical presence is USA, India, Brussels, and Africa. This is a sample list of our customers. So utilities, oil and gas, energy, um, chemical, uh, retail, companies like Siemens, um, high tech, pharma, life sciences, healthcare. Uh, this is our list of our customers. Let's deep dive into, <clears throat> so if you see today, um, and I hope uh, if you are one of these three, you will be able to relate to it. So if you are a maintenance engineer, you are spending most of the time, and, and you may be in different bucket, depends upon where you are on the digital transformation journey. But typically I spend most of the time on data collection and data entry. Most of my decisions are based on the experience and gut feeling. I follow what my planner has asked me to do. So that's typically a maintenance engineer. What about the maintenance planner? I don't know if all my assets are complete. My equipment performance risk and maintenance data are sitting in silos. I still follow the traditional practice of time-based maintenance planning. I use system to generate only MIS reports. I spend a lot of time preparing them so hardly get time to analyze them and here look at the plant head i want to make my production scheduling decisions based on the equipment health and reliability data i want to optimize my cost of production maintenance budget decisions are based on non-scientific methods i want to adopt digital technologies like iot machine learning to reduce maintenance cost and increase asset look at what a uh, what a diverse opinion between these three. And so maintenance engineer, uh, 
says, I need better tools. Maintenance planner says, I better tools. And plant head is saying, I want to make better decisions. And that's where we can help. So this is how the typical maintenance journey and asset optimization is defined. And we also call, <clears throat> sorry about that. We also call that uh, uh, maintenance maturity curve. So Crave Infotech has their own maturity curve assessment methodology. There are 39 questions we ask our prospects and partners. And depending upon that, we can identify where you are on this maturity curve. So of course, um, a lot of people are still under the reactive side. They are waiting till the machine fails. Some have moved further, graduated to do the preventive. So performance maintenance as regular intervals based upon the manufacturer recommendation and so forth. And then <clears throat> there are very few have moved from preventive to the condition based. So this can be based upon the feedback from your SCADA system or IoT system or the data which is captured, you're using to create a condition-based maintenance. And finally, predictive. That's where the real uh, application comes into picture. So capturing right information, right data, and using through right algorithms to do the predictive analytics. And I know everybody wants to get onto this curve and get to the predictability. Uh, and that's where we can uh, come and talk about that. We have a uh, no obligation assessment process whereby we can come and assess where you are, and what, how we can help you. Of course, everybody, I look at this graph on the top. That's what is today in most organizations. Reactive, preventive is a lot and very little predictive. Where everybody wants to go, lower your reactive, reduce drastically your preventive and increase extensively the predictive. If you are from regulated industry, chemical, oil, uh, oil and gas, pharma, life sciences, I'm sure you have seen citations like this. You are inspected regularly. Your regulations are, uh, um, um, you have to fulfill the regulations. And if you don't, you get the citations. Now I have this specifically for pharma and life sciences. So these were the citations companies have received uh, in 2019, and you can see here, most of them are related to, a lot of them are related to maintenance, cleaning, sanitization, maintenance, testing, then uh, um, equipment design, calibration, inspection, checking. So a lot of them are related to the maintenance. These are very specific to life sciences, 21 CFR part 11, 21 CFR part 211. And our applications, uh, help, they, they meet these regulatory requirements and help you to meet those. Now let's talk about how you can achieve the asset performance optimization. So first of all, what you need is an ability to manage and maintain electronically equipment masters, bomb spares, order processing, calibration. But these are the different processes, right? You might have different name or many more processes, but these are more and less, this is what we do. And you need an ERP for that. Once you have an ERP, you are now started to collect the data. So you are, you are, and there are ways to collect the data. So if you are only ERP, of course, you are gonna go out, do it on a paper, bring that information back and feed it into the ERP and make some decisions. But if you want to make that automatic and get the manual touch points out, then you might need an IoT or use your SCADA. Second is you can have mobile solutions which will allow you to capture those details, completion details out in the field. So field mobility, if you have um, issues with the coverage, then you will need offline. You definitely need a real-time connectivity so that as soon as the information is captured, it's updated. So for example, as soon as the materials are confirmed, they are updated in the back end and they go through the updation process real-time updates, and also where needed, you like the labels and the documents to be printed out in the field. And that's where the mobility comes into the picture. Third one is, if you have, now uh, the, or the organizations are moving from siloed into a, a collaborative network, collaboration network, 
and there is a network also available for equipment. For example, if you have vehicles, and if there is a recall on a specific vehicle, you should be able to know that. So if there is a network maintained for vehicles from the manufacturer to distributor to the um, the dealer to the end user, then if manufacturer said this happened, it should be instantaneously available, including all the information what needs to be done. So you can be a manufacturer or you can be on the user end, but system should be able to help you. So that's where the network comes into picture. Then the next step is the analytics. So we have an ERP, we have the baseline information, we have started to acquire the information data, and then now next step is the analytics. And that's where the asset strategy performance management tools comes into picture where you can do failure mode analysis, reliability centered maintenance analysis, FMEA, RBI, RCA. So these are the different analysis modes uh, which are available, which are um, help you to use the right information, do the analysis, and finally do the predictive analytics. And then that will produce corrective actions, which can be fulfilled through the mobility or directly into the ERP. So this is again another uh, way of representing the uh, maintenance maturity curve. And we help organization to understand this and, and create a roadmap or journey how you can do that effectively using different tools. Now let's dive into what we have. So this probably might uh, be familiar to you is uh, if you are using a customer facing then you and, and a utilities, then you have these are familiar turn on, shut off, meter related, move in, move out, payments. If you are doing a normal non-utility organization, you are doing preventive corrective inspection permitting, or you might have other processes, but capital and new services are also will be there. They all convert into work order somehow, and they all need to be scheduled. They all, they, if they are field-based, then they need to be monitored. And then finally, if you have an asset or map-based dispatching, it will help you to basically dispatch the critical orders on time and download those to the mobile and then complete them and update them into the SAP. So that's a flow, um, a typical flow of data from the source until the updation. <clears throat> So this is another representation of what we have. So if it is a customer facing, then you have flexible scheduling. And uh, um, once the scheduling is done, <clears throat> you have we have a tool for flexible dispatch. Uh, this is a very simple tool. <clears throat> so we also do MRSS from SAP, <clears throat> or if MRSS is the overkill, you can use our tool for flexible dispatch. And then comes the tracking and map-based dispatch, planning workbench, and approval. So your work order approval, notification approval, and so forth. Finally, once that is done, it goes out to the field for mobile application and the backend completion. And there are several tools they are aligned uh, in this pathway. So we also implement standard SAP solutions like MRSS, uh, Asset Manager, um, but we also have our own applications which are built using Fiori. Why, um, what's key about our applications? So of course they are on premise or on cloud, they work on both. So you don't, you don't have to have cloud platform per se for every one of them. They are out of the box embedded with single sign-on. They are fully integrated with SAP integration ready for non-SAP application. It's an out of the box product, configurable to the customer needs. So we have a backend stack, which allows you to configure through SAP table maintenance, changes the behavior of the mobile application. So you can hide a field, you can remove fields, you can change the location, all of that you can do. SAP and Zebra validated. So that means they are tested for memory leak, they are tested for user interface, they are tested for um, how the mobile application uh, should function or a, uh, on, a, on a mobile device, especially the 
the enterprise grade mobile devices a role based access is already built in full audit trail uh, helps you to be compliant there are ton of validation and it's a standard essay. this is very important there are many partners or uh, providers who have got solution but they add another layer we do not add any layer it's all standard sap architecture no additional layers direct connectivity with sap so you don't have to depend on us so let me now walk you through uh, the application so you can get a better idea about it let me bring that on the screen okay so this is our uh, we call mobile workforce management platform and here you can see we have created these tiles which covers probably 20% of the transaction in plant maintenance which you perform 80% times so you don't have to worry about transaction we don't want you to worry about create functional location or il01 or il02 you remember your business language and we will help you to transform that into sap create notification so let's create one notification so you can see uh, this screen looks like this on a desktop it will look like this on a mobile phone or a tablet so it is responsive it works on all the platform whether it's android ios or windows so there is no limitation and it completely responsive and adjust to the form factor you might have so this is how it will look like on a mobile phone i'm going to go back to the larger so that you can good see better so i'm going to create a notification for an example so so test for demo uh, i'm going to select an equipment and i'm going to basically search all i can of course search by type of equipment name of the equipment so let's take a boiler the function location automatically comes i can select who is going to do that yes the first planner i can also assign who is going to work on it mechanical reported by she can i can select the priorities high priority i can define whether it's a breakdown or not because then it will uh, this is for the demo and then this will basically create a notification probably ask me more information if needed it depends upon the order type and the notification is created bingo uh, once the notification is created uh, i can and there are other notification like service notification change notifications are also there now i can also do the notification approval if there is approval required so if i am the one who has to approve see here it appears in my inbox i can see the details i can see uh, this is what we have entered right by shrikan by mechanical this is the equipment i can see the equipment details if needed um, i can collapse this screen so i can see more there was nothing added right so i can add if i need to add task i can add the task can i add the task here uh, no i can because i am uh, approver i don't so i'm going to just approve this because this is looks like a uh, good job we should do approved and this is approved um so that was we have seen a second role here right so first role is <coughs> I have to go back so every one of these represents applications we are only looking at one today um, so let me go back to so we did the approval um, let's create a notification now uh, sorry the work order okay so uh, here i can see the notification list um, i see uh, there is a notification this is the one we have created and i would like to create a work order from here so i can create a work order from here i can also add statuses or add items i can do that but i will move forward and create a work order so uh, create work order yes yes and based upon the order type it will default most of the things i can change some of them we have functional location yes i need a business area and uh, planner group okay test order 
um, control key. Now I'm creating an operation. So I'm going to see a PM01. Just operation 10. Operation for demo. Next. So the, this is this is connected to our uh, live system, and uh, this is a live demo. I have created the order, and uh, now I can go back and I'll show you something cool now. So um, uh, while I'm doing this, so I have created an order. Give me one second. Going to create another session I can so that I can show you the now the planner the order is created now planner needs to do the planning and he need better tool to make the right decisions so we are going to give him oops nope not that one like this so we are give, going to give him a better tool, planning workbench. Planning workbench, this is the workbench for a planner, dispatcher, scheduler. He can see order by statuses. He can see the plan and unplanned order percentage, order by uh, type, order by priority. And he can see all of his research and how they are doing. He has right things at his fingertips all the key transactions he need to perform every day, right? The reports. Now I want to go and see all the open orders. So this gives me a list of all of my open orders. These open orders, I can see what are the operations here. If I know who is going to work, I can assign them. Also, we have an algorithm built which tells them what are the top three people based upon the availability, based on the skill set. Everything is available at their fingertip. But he's not ready yet. What he wants to do is he wants to see the details of this. So I can go inside the order. And this is a special dashboard build for manager, supervisor, and planners to make the right decision. On the top, I have order-related details. Then I have details related to the KPI of this equipment. What is the mean time to fail, mean time to repair, how many notifications are created ever, how many orders are created. And these details are order-specific. You see there is no permit. There is one notification we created that is attached. How many measuring points are there? List of the orders and what's happening with this order, who are supposed to work, and what is the plan and actual cost. Everything at my fingertip. Not only that, I can also, we have integrated the um, augmented reality to give you the visual graphics of the uh, equipment. Uh, so it will bring in data sheets, videos, everything what is needed um, to run this process. I think I have some error going on, so I will uh, leave that aside. Okay. Yep, so uh, we'll come back to that later. Um, then uh, um, once I am confident that I need to do it, I can also, if I have emergency, it cannot go to the mobile, I can print it. Why this is different? Typically, when you do from work order, you can only print the operations. In this case, we have provided additional printing capability by which you can print the notification and the attachments, PRTs, and anything attached to PRT, permits, functional location equipment. So if you have data sheets, you have uh, diagrams, they are attached to functional location equipment, they will also be printed as a part of the package. That's all available at your fingertip. Now I'm ready to go and do the actual planning. So I'm doing order planning. I can copy from a task list. I can copy from a reference order. So you have those functions available. Not only that, if you have materials from third party system, I can select those third party systems. So we have created a framework by which you can <coughs> uh, bring in the data from the third party system also. <coughs> So this is our tool. Again, uh, this is also fully responsive, works on tablet, mobile, uh, desktop uh, tool, which helps you to um, do the planning on the go. So um, let's go back and recap. We have seen how you can create 
how you have a dashboard where most of your PM transactions are at one place. You have ability to create notifications. Now that you can give it to anybody, right? Because I am, uh, because I am the main person, so I have everything available, but that might not be the case, right? That might not be the case, and I will only get what I am authorized to. So I'm gonna go back to the screen. So these are all different role-based. Okay. <clears throat> so all these styles here are role-based. Depend upon the role, I will only see whatever I'm authorized to. If I'm only creating notification, I'll see create notification. I'm approving, I'll see approval or both of them. So once I have, so we have seen create notification, approvals and we have done the planning now let's go to the person who is actually going to execute in the field so this is what he's going to see he's going to see the summary for himself what are the orders attached to me what orders i will be working on what notifications i'll be working on then <clears throat> i can see the list of my notifications there is one more feature we have here is self-assignments. You might have a very small group of people and they need an ability to do self-assignment because you don't have a planner. And no system should force you to have a planner or a manager. That's not good. So there is a self-assignment functionality whereby you can say for this specific plant or a planner group, send all orders to all people there and they will see. and. Once one person assigns to himself, self-assign, it will disappear from everybody else's device because now it is assigned to him. So now that's gonna see 45 is 55 has come to assign notification and I will be able to work on them. I can see the details and I'll be able to work on it. I, so when I go to the equipment, I will see all the details about that equipment, equipment number, where it is installed, and if there are any notifications done for that, any attachments, I can also attach new attachments. I can take cam picture uh, from here. And also I can see the hierarchy of that note equipment. All of that I can see from here. <clears throat> so coming back to uh, here, um, I'll go back into, so I looked at the notification list. Um, I can also create work order from here. Uh, we have seen that in the past. Uh, I can change uh, user statuses. This is very cool, which is not available typically in many systems. And let me show you that. I can change the user status. This will look like exactly how you see in the back end if you have user statuses. You can numbered or non-numbered user statuses. I can, you can change directly from here and it will update in the backend instantaneously. So then the next is the work orders. So these are the work orders which are assigned to me. I can see the statistics related to them. Again, the equipment, I hope I can go back. Looks like, okay. We have a bug there, it's not taking me back. I need to fix it. Okay, so um, work orders. I can slide this uh, panel so I can use more space if needed. And um, um, I can hide that hole. I can divide this by order types if I need. Then uh, uh, here, um, I can also go to notification and see the details. In this case, there's one operation and that's a test operation 10. If you remember, we put that operation. So um, I have not assigned any material. I can add a bomb, add new non-bomb. I can uh, add new materials. I can look at the history. These are the orders and this, and there was no attachment, but I can put an attachment. So I can add an attachment so that uh, when that goes through, it will go back to the back end. 
the same. So attachment gets attached. Now we are ready to complete. So I can do start. Oh, sorry, I haven't released the work order. So I, I, I can release the work order. So now this is all releasing and all that we can define who can release, whether the field person or the backend person, that all can be defined and system will function accordingly. Uh, this also you can make mandatory or you can just keep it optional. In this case, it's mandatory. So it's asking me to enter, close. So uh, you can see the status is updated to release. Now, um, this is the operation I'm in. Um, of course, in this operation, there are so many measuring points and they are qualitative and quantitative. So I can take them. Uh, based upon, again, uh, we have asked um, remarks as uh, mandatory, so it pops up. Uh, this will take a little bit uh, of time because it's creating the measuring point on the measuring document on the fly <coughs> and updating it a uh, little bit slow. So, uh, it's basically uh, for the field person, he is basically creating the um, measurement document or, or complete capturing the measurements and it's creating the measurement document uh, in the backend system. I think our system is also a little bit slow and my connection is also very bad. So let me go back uh, and pick up from where we are. Okay, it says measurement document created, right? So it is creating the measurement document on the fly. You can also take results if this is quantitative. Um, and then I can confirm materials, right? I can do the bomb material. So it's gonna bring in if there is any bomb. Yes, there is material uh, operation 10 and the quantity I'll say two. Sorry, I can increase the quantity, okay. So it's basically adding the materials to that operation, right? And I can, um, yeah. Um, so once I add, um, of course, it's basically issuing the materials against that order, so again, that operation. Okay. Uh, then we have the uh, attachment. This is the one I added. And finally, it also tells me who are the people who are working on this. It will capture the start and end time based upon because I did the start and it will give me the at the time of completion. So you see here, um, I'm starting this order, right? And then I'm going to complete this order. Of course, I did it so quick. In the completion, it will show me start time, end time, the duration, this is all calculated in the back end and then the who are the teams working I can change their time and I can change their total duration I can also capture the failure codes if there are any and save so that's how we basically uh, uh, completed the order I have done so many steps. This can be confusing. So, uh, but we have basically completed the order into the field. And so we did the note. I looked at notification. I have completed the order. I know the dashboard and a couple of very important features is I can see what are my equipments I'm working with. So I get the equipment list. Not only that, I can see the complete hierarchy like what we see in SAP. So I can select the functional location. Uh, this is one of the hierarchy and I can expand all. These are my functional locations. I can add the equipment hierarchy and you will see all the equipments. Also, you can see like what we see in the backend, different colors. Now I can go to that equipment and I can ask to go to map or I can create equipment notification or work order from right from there. 
Now this is a larger geography for presentation, but it will show exactly where you have. So these are the locations where there are equipments, right? And I can create order for them. I can create notification or I can even get direction to that uh, place. So if I do create order, it will basically create the order what we have seen before. So we have complete map and the hierarchy, both of them available. And finally, at the end of the day, it will produce me a timesheet. So as I do my work, it will put the completion of each operation. Plus I can add non-work order time, coffee, meal, parking. I can specify what time to what time I was doing uh, that activity and it will capture the time. Okay, one hour. So that's how I can create the complete time sheet throughout the day. I can also see the week view. Oh, there is nothing available for this guy. So uh, that is how a person who is out in the field will be able to manage. And all of this data is updated real time in the back. End. So I hope that gives you an idea about uh, going back to uh, the dashboard that gives an idea about now these are the some we also have rounds manager so I'm just going to give quick glimpse of the rounds manager this is oops, I don't think I have credential but so rounds manager is for uh, this will um, so this will uh, um, uh, connect uh, rounds manager will help you to take the reading based upon predefined list um, that can measuring points or that can be equipments and that will help you um, for somebody to get those readings in a structured way uh, in addition to that we have scheduling printing printing i have shown you from some other place processing so individual confirmation collective confirmation kpis order to bomb history and all the reports so everything at one place so that was the live demo. Uh, sorry about a couple of hiccups. I think our back arrow at one place equipment is not working. So there is something to work with. Uh, I'm gonna go back to the presentation, just close the session. So you have seen this like planning workbench, augmented reality. This is how that uh, I was, I couldn't get that up and running. This is how the it worked. Also we have chatbot so that you can verbally, you can say, tell me what is the mean time between failure for this equipment and it will bring that up. Uh, calibration, uh, breakdown and maintenance, uh, asset inspection. This is specially built for utilities, pharma, life sciences, um, and especially the large equipments outside. Field service manager. And then we also have connected assets and vehicle. This helps you to track your vehicles outside your people and do the uh, online um, this thing. We also implement standard SAP, right? So that's uh, the complete suite. Uh, so PDMS, AI, and ASPM, Asset Central, all of that, including Asset Manager. So if you have any specific needs, uh, uh, predictive maintenance, please feel free to talk. Finally, you know, a few things about why we, right? So we are continuously innovating uh, into the SAP space, end-to-end -end configurable prepackaged solutions. Create application use standard SAP, no additional layer added. I spoke about that. Uh, all applications are validated by hardware vendors like Zebra. They are UI enabled, so they work on all the uh, platforms, OS, and, and also the form factor. In order to make it easier for you, what we have also done is we have created uh, Amplify packages. So we can help you implementing plant maintenance for a specific scope at a specific cost. Similarly, Asset manager, plant maintenance asset manager, calibration, and maintenance mobile application. So we have uh, Amplify packages already available. You will have to check which region they belong to, right? And there are different packages. Finally, uh, this is, we today only talked about EAM, Enterprise Asset Manager. We have similar solutions for warehouse, direct store delivery, supplier digital connect, truck loading and then production life cycle management. So for pharma, we have a very demanding solution, air handling unit filter, and digitization of the e-log book. Salesforce automation, digital customer network, change control management, project management, dashboard. So for you name any business unit you have, we have a solution for them. And they are all Fiori UI5 based, and they are ready to go. So I would like to finish on time. So if you have any challenge, 
uh, we will definitely open for question and answer. You can reach out to us at this number and this email address. Uh, so we have end-to-end -end, uh, enterprise asset management solution complemented to SAP offerings. We can help you to do your EAM maturity curve assessment. And uh, if you have challenges um, getting off with the Fury or amplifying Fury or getting it to a better shape, we'll be happy to help you there. Let's open up for any questions or uh, uh, you can type in, in Q&A or chat. Or you can just un, um, unmute yourself and you can ask questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, back to you, Sunny. Sunny, are you there? Sunny, you are on mute. Okay. Hello. Thank you, guys. Uh, we can hear you, Sunny. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, before just uh, closing the session, I would like to launch the poll questions that we have. If you guys have a couple of minutes, just go through the poll questions and we can end the sessions after that. Okay, I think Shitan, we are done for today's session. I'm just closing the poll right now and uh, we can close the session. Okay, thank you everyone for joining today's session and have a great day ahead. Thank you.